This is Twit. Apple came out with its iPhone 5C, and it looks like the C has ended up not being cheap or China. The 5C will sell for 4,488 yuan in China, which is about equivalent to $730 U.S. That's much pricier than the unlocked $549 price in the U.S. Half of the smartphones shipped in China are in the 700 to 1500 yuan range, about a quarter of the price of the 5C. The iPhone also did not launch on China Mobile, China's, China's premier carrier, though iPhone models were approved for China Mobile's TDLTE bands August 3rd. 30th TDLTE is expected to launch in China in November, so iPhone could still come to China Mobile then. Yesterday's Apple announcement kind of got all the attention, but that didn't stop Motorola from having a little vent of its own for its made-in-the-USA smartphone, the Moto X. The Google-owned phone maker opened the doors yesterday to Flextronics, which is a Texas-based company contracted to manufacture the Moto X. If you want a better look, the new factory is actually on Google Maps Street View and lets you get as close as looking over a balcony onto the iPhone assembly below. Uh, Moto X assembly, I would imagine. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals rejected Google's attempt to overturn a lower court ruling that said Google violated the Wiretap Act. Now, the lawsuit is based on Google collecting data from unsecured Wi-Fi networks while gathering Street View information. Google argued to the Ninth Circuit that information from those unsecured Wi-Fi networks were readily accessible to the general public, which, which would have meant Google didn't violate the Wiretap Act. The Ninth Circuit disagreed, saying, Members of the general public do not typically mistakenly intercept, store, and decode data transmitted by other devices on the network. I don't know if that's true. AT&T finalized its purchase of $1.9 billion of spectrum from Verizon in the 700 megahertz band. Why would you care? Well, it's going to save Verizon some money on spectrum. Maybe they'll pass the savings along. Uh, but more importantly, it wasn't using that spectrum, and AT&T now will. It'll improve its LTE service in 18 states. This also comes with AT&T announcing it will support interoperability with smaller carriers in the band 12 space, which covers that 700 megahertz and some neighboring spectrum. Intel announced a new range of low-power processors at its Intel Developer Forum event in San Francisco. The Quark system on a chip will be one-fifth the size of Atom processors and use one-tenth the power of Atom. They will be x86 compatible and initial parts will be built on a 32 nanometer process. But most interestingly, perhaps, is the Quark design is now fully synthesizable with extension points to allow customers for the first time to integrate their own functional blocks onto Quark system on a chip. A new set of declassified documents says that back in 2009, the NSA improperly tracked more than 15,000 suspects in violation of FISA court rulings. The NSA software apparently tracked those people without the agency having reasonable suspicion, which you kind of need to track people. In March 2009, the FISA court actually revoked the NSA's authority to perform bulk queries until the U.S. government was able to restore the court's confidence However, the ability to conduct bulk queries was reinstated in September of 20, uh, 2009. Lenovo announced more Haswell laptops in conjunction with the Intel Developers Forum. Yes, Lenovo announced five new laptops at IFA last week, but now there's some more business laptops. The T, the WL, and the E series laptops all get some Haswell versions for the Intel Developer Forum set. Laptops also feature improved graphics, LTE connectivity in some cases, and more security options. These models will come out in October and November. Apple never mentioned the Apple TV at the big iPhone event yesterday, but All Things D reports that on September 18th, which is the day Apple plans to release iOS 7, the company will also announce an updated Apple TV. It's said to have an internal overhaul, which includes enhancements to the AirPlay wireless streaming technology that would allow users who've already purchased a program or a movie or other video content from their own accounts to stream that content to another person's Apple TV using iCloud. Kids love tablets and Toys R Us loves kids, parents, money. But they don't even want a lot of it. The Tabio E2 is the company's new tablet with an 8-inch multi-touch display, 1 gigabyte of RAM, 8 gigabytes of storage with an SD card slot to boot, and all of the parental controls and child-friendly apps of previous Tabios. The new model launches in October for $150. 
The New York Times reports that an algorithm for generating random numbers contains a backdoor by the, for the NSA, that is. The dual underscore EC underscore DRBG algorithm was adopted by the National Institute of Standards and Technology back in 2006. Now, the Times says the internal memos leaked by Edward Snowden confirm the NSA actually generated that algorithm. Originally, the standard did acknowledge the NSA as a contributor, but not as its primary creator.